there, there was just a lot of numbness. That's a real word. You know, I, I didn't have emotions growing up. Life was sad, life was painful. Uh, I didn't want it to continue. And I realized that in my whole life, I had never actually thought about God. If somebody believed in God, if somebody said they were religious, I just thought they were stupid. Not only was I having thoughts of taking my life, at this point, I actually attempted not just once, but three nights in a row. It is more something than I thought. All of my grandparents were born in Eastern Europe, Yiddish-speaking Jews coming to America in the early part of the 20th century. When I was growing up, we were no longer Orthodox, but we were very definitely Jewish. For example, every year at Passover, I would ask the four questions, of course, beginning with, Why is this night different from all other nights? And uh, every year we gave the same answers, but did I believe it? The story of Moses and Pharaoh, the plagues, the miracles, did I really believe all that? No, of course not. Did, did anyone actually believe that? The idea of Jesus having anything at all to do with my life was just unthinkable. There was one time I remember I was young, I was at a mall or maybe a department store in December. So they used to play the Christmas carols on the loudspeakers. And I heard things like, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. And another one talks about little town of Bethlehem. And I thought, wait a minute, are we sure this has nothing to do with us? It doesn't sound that foreign. I suffered from severe depression. And even as a very young child, I was having thoughts of suicide. And I didn't really know why, because on the outside, things actually looked pretty good. So when I got to high school, my plan was very simple. Uh, just keep my head down, hope that it doesn't last forever, and just try to get through it. And in college, I was a disc jockey, and that was something very new for me. And I could even say, for the first time in my life, I was having fun, but it didn't last. I started having the old uh, feelings and the old thoughts that I had when I was growing up. But now it was a little bit different because not only was I having thoughts of taking my life, at this point, I actually attempted suicide, not just once, but three nights in a row by taking large amounts of pills and alcohol. After the third night, I was found and I was taken by ambulance to the hospital. It is more something than I thought. I went back home to New York and while I was there, I learned some things about my family that I had never known before. For example, both of my grandfathers had actually committed suicide. And I would also later learn that uh, one other, a great-grandfather back in the old country, did as well. The one point of optimism I had was uh, having just hit rock bottom, I had nowhere to go but up. So I decided to give it a go, life. And I tried different jobs and different things wasn't successful at anything, and I wasn't quite at the point of having the old thoughts, but I guess the best way I could explain it is I was maybe thinking about thinking about it. And then one day, out of the blue, I heard some very shocking news. A Jewish friend of mine came and told me that she now believes that Jesus is the Messiah. Right away, I started to say, what are you talking about? This isn't right, he's not for us. And by the next day, I realized I was very curious. And I realized that in my whole life, I had never actually thought about God. Prior to that, it was always very easy. If somebody believed in God, if somebody said they were religious, I just thought they were stupid. I wanted to begin at the beginning. So I started reading the book of Genesis. I read through it, I poured over it, all the while, I was wrestling with the material, and by the time I finished the book of Genesis, I realized I was no longer just wrestling with an ancient text, I was wrestling with the living God. 
Now, my job that summer was selling ice cream from a cart right in the middle of New York City. So all day long, I sold ice cream, and that gave me plenty of time to think about everything I was reading. And I decided I want to jump ahead and start reading about Jesus. I had never read the New Testament in my life. I had never been in a church for any reason. I knew about the Crusades and the Inquisition, and I knew about the blood libels and the pogroms, and obviously there's no good news in any of that. But now I'm going to the source. What in the world am I gonna find in the pages of the New Testament? I'm now reading the story of a Jewish man who lived in a Jewish place and taught a group of Jewish followers and celebrated Jewish holidays and claimed to be the fulfillment of Jewish writings. On every single page of the New Testament, there is some kind of reference to Moses and the Jewish prophets. A number of times, Jesus had discussions with the leaders, and he was often calling them out for their hypocrisy. It was the same type of hypocrisy that I always assumed was part of all religion, but especially Christianity. So here I am kind of siding with, with him. And I thought, well, that's interesting. It might even be true, but I don't want it. So the only thing I knew to do was start reading it again. And I was about halfway through now for the second time. And there was a, a certain point of theology that I couldn't really grasp. And it dawned on me that maybe I don't need to have answers to every question today, but I wanted to take stock. Okay, what do I believe? I realized that at this point, I was reading no longer as an inquirer or as a skeptic. I was reading as somebody who was pretty much on board with the message. In other words, I believe this. I had just been reading about Jesus in the New Testament, and I was saying, yes, I agree. I want this. So I prayed. I need Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And God not only heard my prayer, he answered it immediately. And from that moment on, I became a new person. All of the stuff, combination of spiritual issues, psychological, emotional, nature, nurture, was lifted and I was set free. It's now been 37 years. I've had challenges like anyone else, but I could say in all this time, I have not once thought about suicide. It's not a fad, it's not a phase. He didn't come to turn bad people into good people. He didn't come to make us religious. He didn't even come so that people suffering from severe depression can feel better, although I could tell you that's a wonderful bonus. But ultimately, he came to give life to spiritually dead people. All of us, because of sin, have separated ourselves from God, and Jesus came to provide the unique solution. This is a message of hope in an otherwise hopeless world.